back again. Slides are blank to me, I'm afraid. Oh, they're coming slowly, one by one. Are we all now seeing the um, title slide? I can see that title slide and Joseph's title slide. Good. I'm seeing, uh, I saw that, and I saw you toggle between those, so that's good. Yep, everything's fine for me. Uh, I can't see anything else at the moment. I can see the title slide and now the uh, welcome slide. Yeah, I've just got, I've got those two and Josie's title slide at the moment. I need more hamsters on this tread, this particular treadmill. <laughs> This is where you can uh, test out the um, accessibility tools and Blackboard Collaborate okay, to read out the slides to them. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I managed to process all of that information. <laughs> I have never known it takes so long, Martin. It's bizarre. I think the CIA are uh, intercepting. <laughs> but, yeah, they're checking each slide. <laughs> <laughs> there are some, frankly, they don't really need to check. <laughs> they're actually out on the web, and they're much more <laughs> easy to find. <laughs> Dear me. Right, my total is up to four. At the moment. For those of you who joined us, thanks for thanks for being there. We're just trying to get uh, get everything up and running and ready for you. And we'll get started in just under 10 minutes. So maybe because we've got recording on, we don't really need the recording on yet, do we? So that's slowing everything down. Oh, one more, one more slide has appeared. Um, <laughs> I don't think it caused an issue, but it might be worth stopping the recording anyway. So yeah, we don't need it on. 
everybody uh, a quick overview of the space that we're at. My name is Theresa McKinnon. I'm the co-chair with Viv, who is also in the room, of the Open Ed SIG. I'm supported by ALT. And I'm delighted that today we're going to do um, a webinar to uh, just give you some teasers about OER 17, which starts in earnest in just a few weeks' time. There will actually be a second teaser as well. So today, Josie is going to talk to us about what's going on in OER 17. And in a couple of weeks' time, we're going to have one of the keynotes, uh, Mahabali, as well, telling us about her process of getting ready to present a keynote at OER 17. So lots of exciting things to talk, talk about today. Just to make sure everybody's got the audio OK and you can hear us well, um, there's some help there on setting up your audio just to run the wizard. Um, and can I just ask you, Jim, to put your mic off for now? Because we're going to yes, um, turn over to the presenters. Thanks, no, that's no problem. That's lovely. And just uh, to point out the chat panel there, so if you're having any problems with the technology, and Lord knows if you've got technology, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. So um, if you have any problems, you'll see the moderator tab at the bottom there to contact us. But if you just want to give us your thoughts as well and uh, add your thoughts into the room, we can have a nice stream of consciousness conversation going on in the room. And that's also where we'll share some uh, links um, arising from the various things we're going to talk about today. So here's just a quick um, reminder of what the Open Education Special Interest Group is all about. We are totally open. You do not have to be a member of, of ALT in order to join the Open Ed SIG. Um, so I'm going to just share with you a link to find us on the, on the web so that you can uh, join us and find out more information and you can see some of the ways that we connect um, together as well. So the Open Ed SIG has a mission and it is very definitely to help remove barriers to education, whatever those barriers may be and unfortunately we're seeing far too many of them. Um, so often they're financial, sometimes they're just Family, family situations or personal situations. We want to make it possible for everybody who wants to learn to access learning opportunities. And for those of us who are involved in actually um, supporting and creating um, resources for learning, um, to make sure that we can share those in an equitable way that supports what we do as well um, and what we believe. So what we want to support is uh, to develop sustainable open education for everybody. And also we have a role, and we're very grateful to ALT for supporting us in that role with a fantastic um, strategy report that came out very recently. It's just been launched um, to influence policy as well in open education. And that's particularly important this year, because this year is the year of open. So if you haven't seen it already, let me just share a, a link to that. There's some more information about the Year of Open here. All the events that we're putting on this year in the Open Ed SIG, we will add to the Year of Open calendar. So you'll see those come through, and that helps to share them with everybody. And as you can see from that screenshot, we've got a very exciting conference going on right at the moment on open education. And those of you who are on um, Instagram will have already seen, no doubt, the fabulous things that people have been sharing from OE Global. Um, so if you're not aware of that conference, it's out in South Africa at the moment. The OE Global hashtag is being used currently on Twitter and Instagram to share what's going on. And there are certainly people uh, we know from the open education community who are out there at the moment, um, people who are researching in open education, such as Catherine Cronin, uh, lots of people that, we've, that are very familiar um, to many of you, I'm sure. Lots of exciting things going on. Um, 
And let's face it, times are getting, it's getting even more expedient that we take openness um, seriously. So a further event that's going on uh, coming up later in the year and just in a couple of weeks' time is actually the Open Education Week. And again, we have an event during Open Education Week and for us that will be Maha's webinar, uh, which will also be tied up to Open uh, OER uh, 17. So that webinar is during Open Education Week. And if you do manage to have a look at, or you know, just Google, Google Open Education Week, you'll see again there is a calendar of events there going on around the world to focus on open. So there's never been a better time to actually track these things down and disseminate them and share them in your networks and make people as um, aware as you possibly can of the agenda of open. And we warmly invite you to join our discussions as well. That hashtag OpenEdSig is the one we use regularly um, to help people keep in touch. We also have a beautiful um, community space now uh, that's available for you to connect either through the blog or write blog posts or through the forums and have conversations. Um, so please do use that and take a look. Um, we keep all our webinars there, so you'll see last year's webinars. We did a lot of webinars last year um, that uh, hopefully will form useful resources for you and for your communities. So that's a very quick overview from me in terms of what's going on in the state of open today. And, uh, and now we're going to turn our thoughts more directly to OER 17, which is coming up in less than a month. So I'm just going to hand over to Josie now and check, Josie, you're OK with uh, seeing and finding your slides now. They've all yep. resed at last, <laughs> which is nice to see. And I'll switch my mic off and hand over to Josie to tell us all about OER 17. That's great. Thank you very much, Teresa. Um, and thanks for that great introduction, too. Um, and it's great to be here today. So thanks for inviting me along. Um, obviously, there's a nice close relationship between this event and the Open SIG with lots of people um, working on both and involved with both. So it's an absolute pleasure to be here today to talk a little bit more about OER 17 and provide a bit of an overview about what's going to happen and also an opportunity for participants to ask questions or to um, talk amongst themselves as well. So OER 17 is taking place on the 5th and 6th of April, so very soon now we're all starting to pack um, and make our travel arrangements if we haven't already done so. There is still time to register. Um, if you haven't managed to do that yet, so please do as soon as possible because uh, you are running out of time on that. And it's going to be taking place um, in North London in a place called Resource for London. For those of you not familiar um, with the venue, it's near the Holloway Road. Um, okay, so the OER 17 is an event that focuses on open education, and particularly, as the name would imply, open educational resources. But it's about a lot more than that. It's about um, open education as it um, integrates into and has meaning for people working with technology, and particularly with educators working with technology. Um, and if you think about the numbers of people who are working creating, finding, using, sharing resources within education. That's a huge, huge amount of us. Um, so the, the relevance of copyright, of openly licensing materials, of openly sharing materials is really, really huge and really, really important for virtually everybody working in education or connected to education today. So it's a conference that's actually quite vital, I think, at this point um, for people to understand and appreciate much more about the, 
particularly digital assets that they're using, um, creating and sharing, and the context within uh, which the context within which that's happening. But it's a lot more than that, and I'll talk a little bit. Um, I'll talk a little bit further about the conference themes and aims in a second. So the conference is supported by the Association for Learning Technology, and I've got a lovely picture of uh, Meryn Deepwell, who's the Chief Executive Officer um, there, and he's been an immense driving force within this conference. Meryn's team has been absolutely fantastic in terms of um, moving the conference forward. And also, OER17 has been really well supported by a team of 44 um, individuals who have volunteered their time to be on the um, organising committee. Those are people all around the world, um, and including, um, including Teresa, who's given us the introduction today and is hosting this talk today. So they've they really need to take the main credit for the huge amount of work that's gone into organising, shaping um, and supporting the event and actually making it happen. So Alec and I, we've been um, co-chairing this um, event this year and it's the eighth um, Open Education Conference. Um, and Really, our role has been a, a, a fantastic one. We, we're very, very lucky, very privileged to be able to co-chair the, the event. We've had great support. So really, what our job has been is to give shape to the direction and the aims of what, how we would like to see the conference and, and the things that we would like to see come out of the conference and also to act as ambassadors to the conference as well um, and to try and support people in understanding what the conference is about, why they should come and connecting the various communities who are already involved in either open education or educational technology um, and more broadly education to appreciate why the conference is such a vital one and um, why it isn't really to be missed at all. So many of you know me, some of you don't. My name is Josie Fraser. I'm based in the UK. Um, I currently um, work as a trustee for Wikimedia UK and I'm an educational technologist. Alec is based in Poland um, where he is um, a leader in the field of um, open education and open licensing, particularly with respect to policy issues. Um, and he's been doing quite a lot of things with um, Creative Commons and other kinds of licensing things. At the moment, he's involved in a really, really good and important initiative to looking at copyright reform in education um, within the European Union. So he's been, it's been great to work with him and it's really nice that we have a kind of a Euro span there as well, that we um, have people that have me in the UK and Alec in Poland as well to support the event. So when we were thinking about putting the conference together, um, supporting and shaping the agenda, we talked about what our broad goals were really and what we wanted to achieve from the conference and, and what we kind of wanted to see when we came out of the other side. So this was our priority list really. Um, we wanted the event to be international. We've already talked a little bit about the international context at the moment of open, open education and OER and we wanted um, this event to take its place um, and support and augment the work that's going on internationally. We also wanted to try and encourage people from um, outside of Europe, so we are a very um, European conference, but we also wanted to support and involve um, people from all over the globe in attending too. Feeding into that and feeding back to that is the contribution that we want to make to the global conversation that's going on about open education and not just the conversation that's going on, but actually the um, activities, the policy, the work that's going on to drive understanding about open education and open licensing forward and to support people in the important 
cultural and um, organisational development work that needs to happen to actually um, embed open education um, and make open education more easily recognised and understood. One of the key things um, that particularly Alec was very interested in was that we wanted to support creative approaches to the topic and to the conference as well. So not um, only um, the really important research and academic um, papers and, and work that's going to be showcased across the event, but also alternative approaches to looking at the field and to engaging with open education and open educational resources as well. Really importantly, I think, we wanted to address inequality and open education and open educational resources are inherently involved and engaged in issues around inequality and, and in addressing that because one of the kind of key concerns um, and key kind of factors in openness is this issue of accessibility. And accessibility isn't just about legal or technical accessibility, it's also a whole other range of issues, whether you have the skills to be able to access materials, whether you have the money to be able to access materials, whether you have the ability to engage in communities and support and work that would help you get the most out of materials that are made freely available. So really it's um, it's a couple of things that we wanted to flag with an address to inequality. One was the um, fact that the issue of accessibility is uh, a broad, multidimensional um, and often unaddressed um, issue within open education and OER, so we wanted to address that explicitly. And also, um, we wanted to think about the ways in which our community and our practice is shaped potentially by um, privilege and by exclusion as well, and look at how we can actually work towards addressing that um, in ways that benefit all of us. Working towards the mainstreaming of open, open education is a um, goal and a, 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 an aim shared by many, many people in the open education movement. Nobody really wants to be the very niche people in the corner that nobody knows about and nobody talks about. And indeed, we've had some amazing um, moves forward in relation to this. So if you think about, for example, Wikipedia um, and you think about how many people access that as, a, as an open education resource, how many people engage with it, how many people contribute to it and the millions and millions of people that benefit from it, in some ways open education and open education resources are part of the mainstream um, not just um, formal education agenda, but the informal education agenda too. And not just education, they're part of everyday life. So um, we know it can be done, we know that, it's, um, that models are possible, we know that there are also issues involved with um, those models, and there are also lots of other areas that connect to those that we need to still address. So for example, understanding about open licensing and open educational resources and people may not use, typically people may use a whole range of open educational resources and openly licensed materials including Wikipedia um, and, and other, other resources and not actually know um, that they are doing that. So that kind of level of awareness of what the benefits are, why it is important to think about um, making things not just freely available but openly available. As, kind, as part of the mainstream discourse is really, really important in a context where we are, many, many of us are online every single day, uh, really reliant and dependent on digital assets, digital platforms for our work, for our connections and for our communities. And the other thing that we wanted to do was to take the opportunity to support um, people who are advocates 
or activists or just interested in open education um, to con contribute to uh, movement building, to give people a space and a time to come together, to network, to meet each other, to reflect on where we are as a community at the moment and where, we, we're, where we're heading as well. Okay, so conference themes then are linked to those aims and the things that we wanted to get out of the conference as a whole. And we split them into four themes. Um, the first theme being local, national and international policy and practice. Um, and as Theresa said in the introduction to this sec sec section, this is a really, really important year for open education. The Cape Town um, Declaration was basically a statement of intent and purpose about um, what um, open education and open educational resources were and where we wanted to go with them. And that's now 10 years old. And at the moment, as we speak, um, the uh, OER Global is taking place in Cape Town to kind of mark that and to um, see what, how far we've come and where we go next. It's also the fifth anniversary of the Paris Declaration, and this was a statement to support um, governments worldwide to adopt open education licenses and practices for education purposes. So um, a huge amount has happened actually over the last five years internationally, and this conference is a great place to find out a little bit about what has been going on globally and where we are, um, and also to reflect on those larger issues too. I know that um, Lorna Campbell is currently in Cape Town, and sh she's actually going to um, talk um, in her session about where we are in, the, in terms of the kind of Cape Town process and um, future. Privacy, surveillance and open politics are um, captured within this theme as things that are very, very linked to um, pr practice out loud, practice that's connected to other people um, and also the kinds of things that concern, uh, concern everybody in terms of their online activity. Um, so it's an important piece, I think, to put in this context in terms of, poli in terms of the broader um, policy and legal landscape that's currently evolving. And obviously issues of governance and power fall into that um, category as well. Our second theme brings the political theme more locally um, and, and down to everyday practice within institutions and organisations. So this is a theme that we're actually quite familiar with within open education and open educational practice. Um, it's around how we um, change cultures, what it means to actually be open in the classroom and what the limits and the um, benefits and the opportunities for openness and open working within the workplace actually are, and particularly in relation to working with learners of all ages. Um, open organisations and organising is another kind of theme around this that feeds into our larger conference aim around supporting um, movement building and, and change as a whole, and gives participants an opportunity to reflect on how they've supported their organisations in moving forward and what's worked for them in terms of connecting to other people um, and, and where, where the most benefit's been derived from their activities. And then this important question around open educational resources and open educational practices and the relation of the two to one another. Um, and, and I think there's some really interesting and exciting talks being given in the in the conference around open educational practice and what it means and why it's important. For me, I think 
one of the key things is that if we are saying that open educational resources are critically about accessibility and about addressing inequality and being mindful of the scope of access as a whole, then open educational practice is, is completely necessary in order to be able to support um, the realisation of open educational resources and to make sure that, that, that those benefits are realised for people as well. Our third theme is less typical of um, open educational conferences um, and, and, conference, and a lot of education conferences as a whole, but we felt very, very strongly that we wanted to really make explicit the very sometimes very personal issues around participation and social equality within the open education movement. So again, we're looking at inclusivity issues in relation to this, which include human rights issues. We're also looking um, within this section around digital literacy, since digital literacy is um, very necessary for just basic social participation at the moment, um, increasingly so within digital societies, it's not possible to access government services any longer, it's not possible to um, do a whole host of things unless you are actually able to connect online and to understand what you're doing once you are online. And so it's becoming an increasingly important issue. Um, and for me, openness is a critical part of basic digital literacy because, as I said before, every day we're, as educators, we're working with um, resources and digital resources of all kinds. Um, so those kind of very basic copyright issues, restraints, and also the kinds of things that open licensing empowers us to do are a really important part of understanding digital and working with digital resources. We also wanted to focus on this section on children, young people and open education. So OER17 is typically um, a very HE, university focused conference and we have um, and welcome lots and lots of great researchers and representatives from universities globally. But we also wanted to try and ensure that we were looking across the span of learning and learners um, and, and not just um, looking at education um, at an older level. I'm particularly very interested in formal education and young people and how we support and use open education in that sector. So um, no surprises that it's in there. And our fourth theme was around open party. So this was a theme for people who didn't really fit into the other um, themes that was, you know, there to show that we are actually very inclusive and we are interested and also to um, underline the fact that we're really interested in quite creative approaches. And I know we've had some really interesting um, uh, sessions that are coming under this hooding, hood heading, including um, a, a board game jam that's going to be going on. So this section is really about celebrating, hacking, making, and also about those kind of wildcard contributions that come from who knows where, but actually are really, really interesting and enlightening for all of us. So here's a word cloud um, that I'll kindly provided me with of the um, kind of key themes that came out of the submission paper submissions. So it's, it's quite interesting. Open is, is justly and rightly uh, really big there. Um, I love the fact that massive policy is quite big there as well. Um, we also have a couple of places called um, Germany. It's really interesting that um, bears also features uh, quite large and if you want to know why bears are on there you'll have to come along or you can um, cheat a bit and just have a read of the conference program because you can spot that one quite easily. 
more bears and pedagogy, David Kernahan has. Um, that's very often the case. It's very often the case. Okay, so the breakdown of the stats that you've got there are how popular each of those themes and those strands that I've just talked about were in terms of contribution. And as you can see, it's a really nice split there with um, local, uh, national and international policy and practice coming out at 60, uh, 30, sorry, 32% and institutional and organisational politics coming out at 31%. Oh, I've got a question from the um, chat room saying where is the word cloud? The word cloud should be on the slide that you can see. If you've got a blank screen in front of you at the moment, um, then these slides will be available afterwards so that you can check out the word cloud um, after this, this session. Okay, so OER 17 is going to be three keynotes. We've got 10 workshops and panels. We've got 84 presentations, nine lightning talks, and we've got one plenary session to close um, the conference uh, in style as well. We've got a great group of keynotes. Um, I'll run through them very quickly. You can find more information out about the keynotes on the website, with, along with links to their work and their websites um, and their online presence as well. So Diane Ars is an artist and a researcher and an activist. Um, some of you will be familiar with Politioki. Some of you won't. It's um, pretty amazing. Uh, it's a pretty amazing activity that involves um, speaking along to political speeches. So like karaoke, but for policy and politicians. You'll have to, if, and if that's not a really good description, um, you'll have to really try and experience it for yourself because it is pretty amazing. Um, she's the founder of Artists Without a Cause. She is originally from America, but she has lived for a while now and is based in Berlin. Um, so we're really happy to have her along to kind of give a creative um, approach and talk really and focus about the, the artist activist involvement in open education and, and why that's important. Maha Bali will be known to many of you. Um, she's based in Cairo in Egypt and she is the co-founder of Virtually Connecting. I know that they were running a session from um, OER Global earlier today, which some of you may have caught. She's also the director of Digital Pedagogy Lab and an editor at the Journal for Hybrid Pedagogy. She's going to be speaking um, in this series, in the next one, I think, in uh, either next week or the week after, in Open Education Week. Um, I know you've already had a reminder about that. We'll send out more reminders too. She'll be talking about her um, process of getting ready for her keynote. I saw on Twitter today that she's already at 90 slides for her keynote. Um, so maybe maybe quite a lot of slides, or she might be doing some editing between now and then. We'll have to wait and see. Um, my advice to her is, is to do the short version. That always turns out to be quite long anyway. Lucy Compton-Reed is um, Chief Executive of Wikimedia UK and she's been very actively involved in um, supporting the Wikimedia community within the UK in looking and addressing issues around inequality, particularly around gender bias. Um, you'll, some of you will have seen the work that's been going on yesterday for International Women's Day um, around Art plus Wikipedia, which is looking at kind of redressing the balance of uh, women's biographies within Wikipedia. I think there's something like only 17% of all bios are actually women versus men. So there's a there's a disjoint there with between the number of women in the world that are doing interesting, important things, and the number of people that are getting that documented within Wikipedia, which is actually really important given that it is such a mainstream critical source of information for most people. So she's been involved in a whole 
bunch of things, and she'll be talking at, at, the, at the event about some of that work that she's been doing as well. And then to close, what we thought we would do is something slightly different. Rather than having kind of like um, a closing keynote or a reporter session, what we thought is we would ask three women to do an incredibly hard job. And fortunately for us, they all agreed to do it. Um, so there's uh, Muran O'Keefe, Catherine Cronin, and uh, Lorna Shuzenovich. Um, are all stepping up to support the conference in engaging with the final plenary and to produce a session that that draws on and, and summarizes some of the important um, priorities, wins, um, issues that arise during the conference and also begin to kind of map out, well, where next, where, where next. Importantly, they're going to ensure that people who are attending the conference, so that's people who are attending the conference in person, if you're lucky enough to be able to do that, or people who aren't quite so lucky who are having to attend at distance, following on Twitter and following through the other media streaming, um, media streams, um, to engage with the kind of questions that they're going to ask and the and the information that they're going to mull through in order to come up with their final plenary sessions. So it's a, it, it's a really fresh, interesting new approach to um, the closing session. Um, it's a huge, huge task, I think. But I think if, uh, you know, I think these three women are up to the challenge. I'm very confident um, that they're going to pull it off and that it will be a fantastic closing session to the event that involves all of us. So, OER 17, there's a lot, a lot of ways that you can get involved. You can obviously come along, um, which is, is pr infinitely preferable to everybody involved, especially you. Uh, if you can't manage to come along, then you can obviously follow the keynotes, interact on in Twitter, using the power and the magic of technology. In fact, it's not magical at all. It's, it's just technology. But it'll be a magical experience, and that's the main thing. You can also, even at this late stage in the day, if you are a wonderful organization that supports open education, supports the open education community, you can support and sponsor the event. Or you can come along and um, show off your wares in terms of your ideas and your, and, and your practice as well. So if you want to do that, get in touch ASAP, um, and we'll be able to hook you up with that. The call out, a call is already out for co-chairs, um, and they'll be being put in place as we speak. So if you are interested in taking over from me and Alec next year, um, then please, please do follow, um, have a look on the website for, and, and find out about what it involves and how you can support the event by co-sharing. Um, we have had a brilliant time. Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm saying that before the actual conference, not expecting our brilliant time to change. In fact, I'm expecting us to have more of a brilliant time over the next month. Um, and I'm very happy to have a frank, open discussion with anybody, any prospective co-chairs about what, what it's involved and what the process has been. And see you there. Uh, you know, it's not very long now at all. Very, very excited and looking forward to it. That was fabulous, Josie. It's, you're so right. It's not very long, and you've been very modest about the hard work, I'm sure, that's gone in um, between whenever it was you started, which was probably back in OER 16 days, <laughs> and, and the, the fast approaching uh, dates that we have in April. Um, we're all really looking forward to feeling that magic again. I know the, the last OER conference I went to, um, the, the community and the feeling of shared vision within that community is, is palpable.
Uh, and it's really great to have such a, a fabulous lineup again. And that international aspect, I've certainly seen it going through Twitter as well. We've seen some tweets coming in from OE Global, which is going on right now, um, sending their uh, good wishes to us as well for OER 17. And uh, it's great to have that international vibe going around, um, around open. And, and that's particularly important. I'm just going to sort of return to this slide because our next webinar session, which is also going to look at one particular part of OER 17, uh, which is what it's like to prepare a keynote and speak to this community, this ever-growing community, about the importance of openness. Uh, that next keynote is, uh, that next webinar is going to be on the 29th of March, so we really hope you'll, you'll join us for that, and that you'll join us as well for our um, discussions around open, whether or not you can physically be at OER 17, you'll connect with the Open Education Special Interest Group and uh, bring your voice to the party because we need uh, a broad base and we need to know what you feel about the issues of open, closed and all shades in between so that we can continue to grow this community and continue um, to spread the message that actually it's com the commodification of education is not the way forward. It's certainly not a way that we're going to solve the world's problems by building walls between countries and preventing discourse and um, knowledge gathering and sharing. We need as many brains on that particular task as we can possibly have. And as we're very aware, the uh, political climate, climate, and it's been alluded to as well by Gabby earlier in the chat, um, is changing. And it's very important that we take that seriously and that we offer a serious resistance um, to this way of thinking, where everything is owned and locked down and accessed only under paywalls or um, for the privileged. Um, I, we, we are nearing the end of our time, but I would like to open the floor and if, if anybody's got any queries or questions or, uh, around open o OER 17 and um, the details for the conference or anything else, please either pop them into the, um, into the chat or raise your hand using the little icons that you have at the top of the participants screen so that we can make sure that you have a mic and you can throw your uh, questions and queries into the room. Um, Lucy, I see you're asking about open research data. I, I, certainly within the open ed sig we're saying we need to join these open communities, open access, open research, open data, um, open source. The, the various communities which have been kind of focused on individual aspects of opening um, and join our voices together. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping that we will get more discourse that, uh, that is connected. Yeah, that I way. think that's a really important, interesting point, Theresa. And I think the kind of notion of, um, around open practice is perhaps the cement that helps join the open bits and pieces um, that have been typically working in, in quite separate areas together. But I think there's a, I mean, I see a big change in terms of the different areas actually coming together more um, and, and connecting to each other and looking to um, build coalitions as well around open practice issues and, and open educational issues too. There's some great sessions going on at the conference. Um, precisely around that, there's um, a, a session about democracy and open data that people can attend who are not as familiar with um, open data or open data kind of approaches and concerns. And to pick up on the point that you're talking about um, internationalism, we've been absolutely spoiled, I think, in terms of the um, the people that we've had on the organising committee and their kind of geographical um, locations globally, um, the speakers, the keynotes, um, and also the talks themselves. So uh, I've just picked up um, on talks that are specifically looking at America, Wales, Germany, China, and India, and work within open education that's going on in those areas. I'm sure there are other 
countries being represented and discussed. Um, I know there's quite a few people from Central and Eastern Europe doing work as well. So it is a great place to not only um, recognise the global outlook and importance of open education, but actually to find out a bit more um, about countries that you may not be as familiar with um, as, as your own as well. So, be, um, so it's definitely worthwhile uh, saving yourself the price of a trip around the world and coming to OER 17 and catching up on the global situation. Absolutely, yes, great, a great opportunity, and yeah, who needs an excuse to go to London? It's all, it's all good. Um, so, if we have, do we have any qu queries or questions? We're seeing the a discussion there, and I'm feeling the love in the chat. <laughs> it's, it's all going on, which is great. And Jim, as well, you're going to join us. That's brilliant. Yes, we need, uh, we need new people too, so please spread the word, please encourage others as well. There is still time to uh, to join the party, to get into OER 17 and come along and join us. Please join join the conversations in the channels as well. Oh great, Helen is going to be there as well. This is fabulous. I've got a, a long list of people now I'm actually finally going to meet instead of just waving to you virtually on, on Twitter. So very exciting. So my final slide is just to say a big thank you here to Alt, uh, because actually without the Association for Learning Technology, a lot of these connections wouldn't have been made. Um, Maren does a grand job, and I think if you've already seen perhaps the link go through in the chat earlier to the latest Alt, Alt strategy, it's great to have open stated there as a value. Um, it's very important that we look at how um, we make sure that open becomes actually a defining value um, within learning technology, within education. Uh, so important that we stand up to these things because once they're gone, they're gone. They won't come back. So what I'm going to do as well is because quite a lot of chats went through the, um, quite a lot of links went through the chat earlier, just to remind you that if you want to save the chat, if you come up to the top left hand corner of your screen, come to file and save and click save chat, that will save as a text doc so you've instantly got access to all of those links. Um, so please do come and, uh, and grab them. And yes, please, Helen, do join Open Ed SIG. As I say, you don't necessarily have to be an Alt member to join it. If you if you are, then great. You can just log in with your Alt membership. But we can create uh, a membership. All those details are on the link that I shared earlier to our um, SIG. So please come along, and you'll be very very welcome. And we will have an Open Ed SIG um, meeting as well during OER 17. So a chance to meet up face to face, share some biscuits and a nice cup of tea, and uh, and actually get to know each other. <laughs> yes, thanks, Josie. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's some fabulous resources as well. I'm pointing to on the on the um, ALT YouTube channel. Um, if you look at the playlists for OER 16, 15, 17, if that's where you'll find all the recordings, all the keynotes, no doubt will be recorded and uh, and many of the sessions. So uh, you're going to be able to uh, to actually connect. And even if you're not able to, to come on, uh, come along on the day, you're going to be able to see everything. And this webinar, of course, will also be available from the Open Ed SIG uh, website. And yes, please do ch exchange Twitter addresses and uh, Twitter um, handles so that we can uh, keep in touch. An awful lot of our discussions tend to happen on Twitter. I know, um, I know they do for me, but they happen everywhere too. So thank you all very much, and thank you, Josie, for a fabulous overview and an exciting preview of OER 17. I know we're really looking forward to coming and connecting, and I'm very grateful to, to you for your time today. And uh, you can obviously revisit 
the webinar at any point if there was anything you wanted to find out more about. But do use those links. Go and have a little explore. Uh, because everything is open and on online, so as long as you can get online, you're, uh, you're away. And um, thank you all very much for coming. We've had a really good turnout today of so familiar and not so familiar faces, but faces I hope that who, who are going to become more familiar. So that's great, a uh, really exciting start to our session. Thank you all very, very much for coming today. And uh, have a great, well, if you're in England, enjoy the sunshine. You never know how long it's going to last. But have a great day. And uh, thank you all very much. And thank you, Teresa, very much. And really looking forward to seeing everybody at OER17. Thanks, Josie. Take care. See you very soon. Thanks all.